Hey everybody, welcome to Phalanx Frequency where all we talk about is general aviation aircraft maintenance. And in today's episode, we're gonna talk about what is included in an aircraft annual inspection. If this stuff sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit the like or subscribe button. And with that, we're just gonna jump right into this thing. So uh, what is included in an aircraft annual inspection? Uh, before we even go, I'm gonna get my clipboard. It's got all my highlights for what we're gonna talk about here. So. <clears throat> um, just a short, very short background. Uh, been in the industry for 15 years, maintaining mostly piston aircraft, some corporate stuff. Uh, I'm with Phalanx Aviation, and we've we've done uh, business all across the country. So uh, that's our background. If you want to learn more about us, check out our website, phalanxaviation.com. We provide a lot of mobile aircraft maintenance support. So. If you're looking for maintenance, go ahead and check us out. But let's go ahead and jump into this thing. So uh, what's included in an aircraft annual inspection? Um, first of all, uh, who's it applicable to? So uh, annuals are applicable to 91 operators, um, and that's the FAR that the airplane operates under. Most people who own a private airplane, whether it's a piston, a turboprop, a jet, and I'm not sure, I know that you can do annuals on jets or an annual inspection will meet the criteria for uh, inspecting a jet. But you, when you get to a jet size, you've really got to um, look at the ma manufacturer's maintenance manual, see if they, what other additional things they want you to inspect. They, they may have a criteria that you have to follow there, but almost all pistons, I don't know of a piston. If you know of one, if someone knows of one, let me know. All pistons operating in 91, which is the majority of personal aircraft owners um, use an annual inspection to comply with a yearly inspection the aircraft has to go through. So if you just bought a piston airplane or you have one and you're interested in knowing what, what, uh, what inspection needs to be done on it yearly, it's the annual inspection. And like I said, it can be done on turboprops, uh, rotorcraft too. Um, and so it's not just piston aircraft. It, it can be used on other aircraft too and really what it boils down to is looking at what the manufacturer requires and what the FAA requires for inspections. So um, that's the aircraft it's applicable to. <clears throat> Who can do annual inspections? Okay, so uh, obviously an IA. An IA is an AMP with an additional rating. Um, so an aircraft and, and power plant, or excuse me, airframe and power plant mechanic with an IA endorsement. That's an inspection authorization. These IAs have to have been in the field for three years maintaining airplanes uh, to be able to test for their IA. So not just any general AMP can do an IA, you, or excuse me, can do an annual. They have to have an uh, IA. Um, repair stations. These are FAA Part 145 certified repair stations. So First, we, an, an IA can do an annual inspection, and that's the most common uh, way of complying with an annual inspection in America. Uh, most guys that have smaller airplanes that need an annual done will go to an IA or go to a shop that employs an IA and will get the sign off every year for that or with an IA. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, certified repair station. So option one, you can use an IA, a shop with an IA. Option two, uh, you can use a FAA CRS 145, FAA certified repair station under part 145. These are shops or entities that have qualified through the FAA to be able to um, inspect your aircraft and sign it off as a company under a, a repair station certificate. So they have to get a special rating saying that they can do or a license saying that they can sign off annual inspections for whatever type of aircraft you have. A little less common in America, but they are out there and they there are repair stations that uh, can sign off annual inspections, but um, they're not as common as the IA. So you can, you know, they, and they're not as public. You know, if you were to Google uh, annual inspection certified repair station, I'm willing to bet you're not going to get a lot of clear answers. You're going to have to like ask the shop, Hey, are you a, a certified repair station part 145? 
do you guys sign off annuals under that repair station? That would be the question to ask to find out very clearly if they do or don't. Because um, just because they're a repair station doesn't mean they can do the annual. There's a lot of different ratings and limitations of a repair station. So some can work on radios, some can work on engines, some can work on avionics, some can do inspections, some can only do it on some aircraft. So like the 145 is a FAA guided, uh, it's more strict, the, the rules and regulations are. So therefore they have to, um, it's not as common to be signing off annuals under a 145 repair station, but it's, it, it's out there. So you can use an IA, you can use a shop that has a 145 that can uh, sign off annuals under the 145. And lastly, the manufacturer. The person who made the plane can sign off the annual. So Mooney Aircraft can, if you took their, uh, I think down in Texas, I don't even know if they're, as of right now, Mooney's been, um, one minute they're open, one minute they're closed, you know, their company. And lately I heard they were starting back up for some training aircraft, but I heard they're into trouble again. And, and they, I don't know if they're operating now, but long story short, Let's say you have a Beechcraft and you want to go to Wichita to the manufacturing facility there to get your annual signed off. Uh, you can do that. Uh, it's completely legal. Uh, you can get it and it's arguably probably one of, if the, you know, I've never had that done. I don't, I, I think I've known of one aircraft owner who, I think they went to Aviat to get their, they had a Husky, uh, a tube and fabric airplane. And they got the annual done at, at the manufacturer's facility. But I don't know of anybody else. So it's not very common to do that either. I don't know if it's because the manufacturers like Beechcraft, Cessna, Piper, Cirrus are so busy working on production of airplanes that they don't do inspections. I don't know. But it, it, in the FARs, it says the manufacturer can sign off the annual too. So um, if you guys know of... If you guys know of your manufacturer, if you own an airplane and you have a manufacturer out there that will do annuals and you've gotten an annual done with the manufacturer, let us know because uh, that's something I don't know. So it'd be interesting for me to know that so I can pass that knowledge along. But um, so let me check here where we're at. Uh, who can do uh, annual inspections? IAs, AMPs with an IA license. Certified repair stations, 145, with the proper uh, authority to do so, and then the manufacturer. That's it. That's what you're going to get. So if you need an annual, you need to hit up those one of those three facilities. If you need an annual, you're probably just going to go aircraft annual inspection in uh, Denver, Colorado, or wherever you live, you know, and or aircraft maintenance shop, Denver, Colorado. And you're going to pull up whoever it is. And that's typically how most guys procure their maintenance. And right now it's 2022. There's a shortage of shops. So, um, you know, it's, it's tough to get maintenance out there. Of course you can use phalanx. We have 130 mechanics now and growing across the nation in our roster. And, um, some of these guys work under us. Some of these guys work independently. Uh, but the, the thing is we have the resource, we have a, a large pool of mechanics that if you're looking for an, an annual inspection, give us a shout. You know, we've got plenty of IAs and we match you with a guy that like, if you got a piston aircraft, we do our best to try to match you with a guy who's got that experience, you know? And at the end of the day, you know, if we can't find someone for you, you just simply decline. But a great resource you should check out, you know, um, to my knowledge, we have one of the largest, um, groupings of piston aircraft mechanics in the nation. So, uh, let's see. Okay. The next topic is how to pick the right mechanic or shop. And this is a good one because a lot of times you don't have the choice or guys don't feel like they have the choice because <clears throat> aircraft owners don't feel like they have the choice because there's just not a lot of shops out there. You know, um, it's not, I used to know all the numbers of shops and stuff, but, uh, every, you know, the requests we get, the most common requests we get through our company is, Hey, the shops are backed up. I need help with this. I need help with that. Or I'm in an area where there is no shop close. So I want to get a mobile mechanic to come in and do the work. And so I hear that all the time. And that's why we, we're, we are a successful company is because the lack of shops really, 
Um, and I don't know if that's going to get better or worse, but you may not be able to choose. Uh, well, let me back that up. You always have the choice. You always have the choice to choose who works on your airplane. The question is, how convenient is it to go to the person you want to go to? <clears throat> In the case of mobile, you find a good mobile mechanic, heck, you know, they come right to you. So it doesn't get any more convenient than that. But in the case of like, if you're going to go to a shop, then, um, you know, if you're trying to keep it close, when we, when I operated physical shops in physical locations, um, we always had a crew car, excuse me. And that, the reason why is because we had a lot of guys come from off so we, we were at smaller airports, a couple of our locations were, and in order to get these guys, we had to make it easy for them. We understood that and we wanted their business. So we had a dedicated car that we would just give these guys, um, that they could use while they're kind of like, you know, your if your car's in the shop and you need a rental, that's what we did. If you're, if you came to us and, um, you need maintenance, you just knew that you could just go to the crew car, start it up and drive home. So that extended our range. You know, we get guys that would do from an hour out from our airport drive time. So we had a lot of the satellite airports around us that guys would, you know, it's not a big deal to fly your plane down, spend it's two, three hours, fly the plane down, take the car, go back home. Right. Uh, if you're real far away, obviously that doesn't happen to where you, uh, can just hop in our crew car and go home if you're like farther away. So I'm not going to go on this too much, but that's where we would, uh, we would get an airline ticket for people. They'd come into our shop, we'd airline them back home. And so we, we figured ways to make it easy for people, but you as an aircraft owner, let's get on topic here. I'm sorry about that. You as an aircraft owner have the right to choose what shop you want to go to. Now, uh, with that being said, the first place to start is in your local airport, uh, search aircraft mechanic shops, near your airport or at your airport. Um, choosing the right one's important because you want to start, well, let's back it up. You want to start local and then branch out. My suggestion is you get a VFR map. There's a vfrmap.com. That's what I use all the time, but you can use a paper one too, or for flight. And uh, you look up the airports closest to you. You write them down. Then you start looking at, AirNav's a great source. Go to AirNav. Look up the airport, see if there's maintenance listed, or you can Google uh, aircraft maintenance at that airport and just do some searching. Make a list of maintenance companies around your area, and then you're going to want to call these places and say, hey, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to, by the way, I'll develop a uh, questionnaire to qualify a shop for your aircraft. So look out for that. Go to phalanxaviation.com. Um, we'll go ahead and make a checklist for you so that these are the questions you want to ask. We'll briefly cover them, but I may miss some stuff. So that's why afterwards I want to make sure that I get you a checklist that you can get for free at phalanxaviation.com. But uh, the questions you want to ask are, you know, depending on what you, you don't want to take your piston aircraft to a jet shop unless you want to pay a lot and not get a lot. And in general, you want to take your plane to a shop where they always work on that plane makes sense, right? So one of the questions to ask the shop is if you have a piston aircraft is, Hey, you know, I've got a beach, but you just, here's what you'd say. I got a beach bonanza and, um, I'm looking to get an annual inspection done. Is that the type of work you guys do? You know, how many annuals do you do on beach bonanzas? How many annuals does your shop do? You know, has the IA who will sign my annual off worked on a beachcraft bonanza before? Has he signed an annual off on a Beechcraft Bonanza? If they can't, if they say no, or it's a cloudy answer, then, you know, you can still get it done there. I'm not saying you can't, but I would prefer to go to a shop that has the experience. Um, they're going to know what points to look at. You know, it's not going to be a learning experience for the shop. They're not going to learn on your plane. They're going to know what to look at. So first find a shop that's got some work experience on doing annual inspections for your type of aircraft. <clears throat> and the next thing to choose the right shop is to, um, 
you're going to want to ask them kind of like how the process goes. Uh, there is a typical flow to annual inspections, but you, when the question that I would ask is, what do you guys use to inspect the aircraft? What criteria, what checklist do you guys use? You know, um, we'll go into the next topic of uh, requirements of an aircraft inspection. So this will bleed into that a little bit, but you want to ask the shop, hey, give me, you know, how's it work when I take my plane to you for an annual inspection? Uh, a good shop, in my opinion, will go ahead and inspect the aircraft in accordance with their custom-made checklist their, or um, the manufacturer's checklist, right? Uh, at a minimum, they can inspect the aircraft in accordance with uh, uh, FAR 43 Appendix D. They're able to do that, but the whole thing is, is that that's pretty vague. So that's the bare minimum requirement. But uh, in my opinion, that you should be asking them, hey, what do you use to inspect aircraft for annual inspections, right? And if, um, you know, like I said, go to a shop that fits you. If you don't want to spend a lot of money on your annual inspection, be prepared to go to a shop that's not going to look at your plane. And if that's something you want to do, that's fine. There's no, but you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's an airplane for crying out loud, you know? And, and as a maintainer, I look at it as, uh, if you value life, uh, then you want to kind of do your research with this. It's, it's, uh, an, a topic that a lot of people take for granted and in aviation. A lot of times you only get one shot, you know, and, and if you mess up, then it's the last mess up you're going to do. So I prefer that people take their aircraft. I'm not saying you have to spend uh, $20,000 on a piston annual, but like if you take it to $500 Bobby Joe and he barely looks at your airplane, eventually it's going to catch up to you uh, in some way. Uh, may not be a crash. It could be uh, you take it to a real shop and they go, hey man, we need to really fix some stuff on this. And that happened all the time with us. We would get planes that had uh, $500 T hanger annuals and then uh, They'd come to us and we would be amazed that the plane hadn't been maintained appropriately. And um, so the bill was a little higher and they didn't like that. Some people didn't. Some people appreciated it. But um, back on topic here, uh, ask what inspection criteria they use. Um, the flow is typically, you know, a pre-run up is a good thing that the shops, some shops will do it, some won't. I know there's... And before we even go, there's a lot of technicalities here, all right? This, this show is basically telling you the truth. You know, this is what we've seen out in the field. This is what uh, we, I know there's FARs. I know there's regulations. I know that there's uh, things to follow by, and we follow that, and everybody should follow that. Uh, but there are, there's a lot of stuff that happens that people don't know about. And one of them is running the plane up, right? So you want to run the plane up before you dump the oil before you do a compression check, stuff like that. Some shops will do it. Some shops don't. Um, you know, it's, you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to do the run up. So the best thing to do is to a shop's flow will be run the airplane up, do some checks on, obviously it's kind of like doing, uh, if, if we're, if we're, I'm going to kind of speak to piston a little bit here, but for a piston aircraft, you're going to do, they're going to do basically what you would do for a pre-flight or excuse me a pre-engine run or takeoff run up it'd be like check the mag cycle the prop check all the engine gauges um and that's the pre-run procedure right get the oil warmed up a little bit as much as it can on the ground and just the mechanics looking at it they're seeing what's what's going on with the plane mechanically and uh but let's back it up uh before you even take your plane to the shop a good shop will ask you what squawks you have right Hey, what squawks do you have? They'll write them down. They'll record them. Um, and of course they'll consult with you before doing any additional work. But so get the squawks, then they'll run the plane up. Okay. After the planes ran up, then they, they open a work order for the plane. Obviously these are shops that I believe to be the ones you should go to. You know, if you got Bobby Joe that just kind of memorizes everything, doesn't have work orders, doesn't then I got to ask you a question, you know, if you're going to go into the airlines or a bigger operation or let's say even piston, do you use checklist, you know, the more complex something gets, uh, a checklist is there to help you make sure you, you do everything. 
So same with inspections. There's a lot to do on an aircraft inspection, even with the simplest airplanes. There's a lot of components and things that can go wrong. So an annual is a good time to find out how everything's doing. And if a guy's not using a checklist, there you go. I mean, you're going to leave it up to his memory to inspect your plane. This is all my opinion. So, um, they get the squawks from you. They do the run up and then, uh, they bring the plane in. They, uh, open the cow, they open the plane up. You know, this is kind of speaking to how we do it, but I've seen this. This is kind of the flow at most shops. They'll open the whole plane up. So they'll dump the cow. A lot of guys will get the oil going right away because it's warm. They'll take the cow off, open the panels up, and then they follow the checklist. You know, there's a main, whatever checklist they have, they'll follow it. And, um, for us, we would put a guy on the engine. We'd put a guy on the airframe, or if one guy was doing it, he'd start at the end. He could start really wherever he wanted, but logically we work, uh, spinner tip to tail on an annual. So we'll start in the engine compartment. We'll do all the normal servicing. So, excuse me, I'm a little congested oil change, uh, fuel strainer inspection, uh, compressions, mag timing check, um, <clears throat> ELT battery. We do a lot of the, our checklist will get the servicing on the aircraft done. And by the way, you don't have to do these things. You know, an annual inspection doesn't say you have to change the oil. It just simply says you're inspecting. So like, it just so happens that it's a good time to get a lot of routine things done. And it's pretty typical for shops to do all this at the annual because a lot of guys don't fly a lot. So this is the one time a year they get their oil changed, unfortunately, for, for a lot of guys. Um, but the gist is, um, they do a lot of servicing one, the next step. Then after they do the servicing, uh, they start in, an inspector an IA will come and look at the airplane. So, uh, this is where it's just a good flashlight, a good mirror and good eyes. You know, if you're got, if your IA, if your IA rolls out and he's using a Duracell mag light, that's got a, you know, a cop light with D, D cell batteries and the lights all dim, dude, I've seen it. It's like, you ain't looking at nothing. Or if you take it in there and it's all dark in the hangar and they don't have good lighting, I, I'm telling you, these are just flags in my opinion of, it, it's not that the, all these guys are bad because there's a lot of old timers out there that have a ton of knowledge. And that's, that's at the end of the day, knowledge is great, but it's my opinion that you need the tools necessary to inspect the airplane appropriately too. And one of those tools is knowledge. So a lot of these old guys do have that old gear and it's like, all right, so I'm not discrediting that. But in my opinion, if you got a younger guy or even an older guy, some of these older guys just get so complacent and they come in with the, uh, the old school flashlight, don't even have a mirror. And it's like, that's a red flag to me. So the inspector needs to have good lighting, a good flashlight, good eyesight, you know, whether it's corrected or not corrected. And then they're going to look at the airplane. And for us, we started in the engine and we worked our way to the tail. So we're looking at, uh, cracks, corrosion, um, out of place items, uh, in our shop, we focus on the flight controls, the structure, uh, or excuse me, our business. We, we tell our mechanics to look at flight critical items first, because on the, on a lot of inspections, like the manufacturer inspection, they'll talk about looking at the interior, looking at the paint, looking at this, looking at, that. and at the end of the day, Okay, we'll look at it, but let's, there's so much to do on an annual and to be competitive with all the other shops. This is the truth. They're not going to follow every T dot I they will to the rigs, but like Bobby Joe doing a 500 annual ain't even looking at half the stuff, not even looking at the flight controls. You know, he, there's, so what I'm getting at here is you typically get what you pay for. And for our shop, we're going to look at the flight critical stuff first, get that, make sure that's good. Then, uh, we'll go ahead and go into like, if it's the first time we've seen the plane, we're going to do a more exhaustive, uh, inspection on it. And I'm going to try to get through this, uh, so I can tell you what the typical flow is. So they got the plane opened up, the IA's coming through, he's looking at the plane, um, looking at flight critical stuff first. So flight control structure, uh, under the panel, making sure that the electrical wiring looks good. Um, what else? Uh, and that's the landing gear. That's about it. It's really the integrity of the airplane and how all the systems are working. So, um, 
when I'm looking at an airplane, I like to just methodically and logically start in one place and work my way around the, almost like a pre-flight inspection, but in depth, super in depth, because then I know if I get pulled away, Hey, I was on this part of the plane. Jumping around is not good. So like I start in the engine, I start in one section, I, I move my way around, I look at everything. So oil leaks, corrosion cracks, cotter keys that are missing, chafing, um, you name it. You know, if it's out of place, it's getting written down as a squawk <clears throat> on the work order. So go through the whole plane, right? Just like that and recording squawks for the whole plane. Then once we're done with that, um, it's time to move into the AD shops will do ADs and um, during an annual inspection you're you gotta look it's required that they look up and do a AD report so they during an annual they're supposed to do look up all the ADs for the aircraft and using the most current data so like um, there's a lot of software out there that'll do it The FAA website, some guys say, hey, I use the FAA website. Go to the, I, w I encourage you to go to the FAA website and try to look up ADs. It's a mess. Because I, I don't know what the FAA is doing over there. I, I literally don't. Anytime you try to call them, nobody's there. So it's the same story. But in my opinion, the FAA is the worst place to look up ADs. Because the organization and the confusion involved with it is just like, what is going on here? Uh, we use ATP software. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff out there and and it's not like you know we we there's pros and cons to every software but we've been used to atp so we've been using it for a while now and it's about 500 bucks a year 600 bucks and so the shop will do an ad report they'll search the database the fa release for eight new ad's that came out on the plane there's two types of ad's reoccurring and one time at annual inspection, a good shop's gonna do a pull a report of all the current ADs they're legally supposed to. And a lot of shops won't deviate from this, but there are a lot of shops that do the FA, hey, I go to the FA database, and I gotta be honest with you, like that's I don't know about that. And that's my opinion. But so they'll uh, they're supposed to pull all the new ADs in for the aircraft, and that's on prop, engine, airplane, and then accessories. The best part is, and there's so much to talk about with the accessory world, like that's magnetos, carburetor, ELT. You're supposed to check on ADs on every component in the plane. Um, there are so many components in a plane that a lot of times shops will do the airframe, engine, propeller, and they'll do maybe some engine accessories. They'll check ADs on that. But if they were to check the ADs on, let's say, like uh, every single accessory in the aircraft and and that's like the all the six packs so the attitude indicator the oil pressure gauges the servo in the back that controls the pitch the uh nav light strobe unit you know any accessory or any part if they were to they don't no one does that no one goes through the whole plane and writes every serial number every model number of every component and right looks up ad's you want to know why because let's just use an example a cessna 172 16 to 18 hours is what the current market's charging for an annual. There is no way that they're going to be competitive with the rest of the shops and be able to do all that. Just not possible. So if a shop, if you know of a shop that will, I would be amazed to hear if a shop literally went through every single component on the aircraft, got the serial number, model number, and I'm talking everything. I'm talking the strobe, the high um, voltage strobe power packs, the whatever. You know, if it's got a serial number, it's got a model number, it can have an AD. So, like, uh, it doesn't happen. Um, but they'll do the engine, uh, propeller, and airframe. Okay, so they check the ADs. Your airplane's going to have one-time or reoccurring ADs on it. The one-time ADs are ones that they need complied with once, and then they're done. The reoccurring ones are ones that come back every so every so many years, hours, whatever it is. And they can be non-applicable too. So like the whole point is that the annual inspection, they're going to pull the report. They're going to see what ADs are applicable, what ADs are not. And they'll comply with the reoccurring ADs, the ones that are due. And then they'll comply with any new ADs that came onto the airplane. So 
uh, very infamous and common uh, AD for a Cessna. A lot of the 100 series Cessnas, I think even maybe 200 series. <clears throat> seat rail inspection, AD. If you don't know about this, every 100 hours, you're supposed to pull the seats, do an exhaustive inspection on the rollers, the tracks for cracking and all this stuff. That's an example of a reoccurring AD and that hits all the 100 series Cessnas. Some planes have more reoccurring ADs than others, you know? And so if you have a, before you buy a plane or if you have a plane, you want to, a, one of the pre-purchase evaluations would be, hey, what are all the applicable reoccurring ADs for this plane? Because if you get stuck with one that has a pretty nasty one, you, it's additional expense, or you want to make sure it's properly complied with. So they're doing the ADs. Okay, at this point, the shop has brought your plane in, looked, uh, serviced the plane, looked at the plane, got the ADs report done with the plane. A good shop is going to make a report, a report of the whole thing they've done, the whole annual. They're gonna package it up. We usually get a PDF. We'll put the thing, the whole inspection together. We shoot it off to you. Okay, they shoot it off to the aircraft owner. Then the, uh, they consult with the aircraft owner. And in this report, it should have what's wrong with the plane, what our estimate is to fix it, just like a typical repair facility. But the point is, is that in my opinion, it's, this is for new, if you're a new, if you're bringing your plane to a uh, shop for the first time, I would expect this to happen. If you've gotten to know the shop and over time they're like, hey, you know, you guys know what's going on. They just, you have an agreement where it's like, just fix everything. That's different, but like a new shop, yeah, you need to, these guys need to um, look through the plane, get a report, give it to you, and then consult with you and go through, you know, bigger items. So if like, hey, your cylinder has got low compression, the exhaust valve isn't seating, or it's bent, or it's over temped, or whatever it is, they need to kind of discuss, we saw it, here's the issues. If they have pictures, here's the pictures of it. This is our recommendation um, and, and get approval. Okay, so they get the squawks to you, they get approval. Then they go back and they'll start fixing all this stuff, right? They'll fix all the squawks that they can fix. And then once they're done with that, they, uh, depending on closeout, closing up panels and stuff, if they did something on the engine, they may not close that up, but they'll go through and they'll close the plane up, right? They'll close all the panels up, um, maybe wipe their grease prints off. That's a good one uh, shop should be doing that and then after that uh, let's say they replace the cylinder if they have something they need to leak check or operationally check then they're going to keep that open a good shop will take it out run it make sure it's running good the engine's running good after a cylinder change make sure there's no leaks and um, that kind of thing so like then they'll do the operation they'll they'll fix the squawks they'll close out the plane They'll do operational checks on the airplane to make sure all the systems are good. Um, even after they worked on it, or maybe they didn't work on it, they'll do a post run up and make sure that everything's looking good. Then they'll do the final closeout. You know, they'll close up the final panels that they had off for the operational run. And then they do log books. So a good shop will do good logs, um, preferably print. Now in this day and age, if you ain't got a printer and paper, and you're not typing it, I don't know what to think about you unless you're in a pinch. Um, and that my point is, is that I've seen so many, for you guys out there that haven't looked in your logs as an aircraft owner, look in them. A nice clean set of log books for your aircraft is gonna increase the value of your aircraft. Your aircraft is more liquid if you ever want to sell it. Can't tell you how many times we've opened up logs and had to spend an hour or two or even half the day just figuring out what we're looking at. And that's billable time. So. Uh, you know, get your logs cleaned up, take, take credibility. And that, that goes to the shop should do a printed, nice, clean printed entry saying that what the describing the work they did. And then there's a golden saying that every by, by regulation that all the log entries have to say after, at, after they've had an annual inspection, that is I certify, I've inspected this aircraft in accordance with and, air, and then they put the inspection criteria they used to inspect the aircraft and have determined this aircraft to be airworthy. That has to go in, that statement has to be in for it to be a good annual, right? At the bottom of the log entry typically is where it's at. Then they're, then they're supposed to carry the tack time, the airframe total time, basically the tack time and all the total times of all the, the airframe engine propeller 
and good shops will do the the sense major overhauls on all those the airframe or time sense new on the airframe times or sense major overhaul on the engine sense major overhaul on the prop uh, so to back it up a good shop will go ahead and record tack airframe total time engine uh, total time engine sense major overhaul propeller total time and prope propeller sense major overhaul times in the annual entry that's a good shop a lot of shops just do tack which is illegal you got to carry the times forward you don't i don't think you have to do the sense major overhauls but it is you got to carry the total time forward of the components um so uh they'll do the log entry then they have they'll put their ad report which in in the aircraft logs as well atp the software you we use does a good job of making a nice pdf file so it's really clean and it shows what ad's were done and not done there's the ad's are supposed to be recorded as being complied with in the airframe and engine logbooks too or prop so you should have log entries saying whatever ad's they they complied with too but um be, lo be on the lookout for an ad report too a good shop will give you a nice clean ad report or they may put it in their logs but like you want to one of the things is like, hey, did you guys do an AD report, right? And uh, you, you might want to see that, see what it looks like. So um, I'm, I kind of went off on that one a little bit because there's a lot of subject to cover on an annual inspection. And I, I brushed the surface on a lot of things, but from start to finish, there you go. Uh, and then they invoice you, obviously call you. And a good shop will discuss the final, hey, yeah, we got the annual done we put the cylinder on it worked great you know and they'll they'll tell you a tip or you know they might say run mineral oil uh for the first 50 hours they discuss things with you after the maintenance a good shop will kind of go through hey what happened what we do this is what's fixed to keep you in tune with your airplane even if you're not a mechanical guy i think it's valid it's it's good to know the machine you're flying so you want get a little uh, post annual inspection briefing from your shop Okay, we talked the good thing about me going through all that is that we talked about a lot of the topics on here so <clears throat> in an annual inspection they're going to follow an inspection checklist they they have to check the ad's and comply with any ad's that are applicable airworthiness directives by the way for those of you that don't know what an ad is it's kind of like uh something the faa publishes and the manufacturers put out that's that addresses an issue or concern on the airplane that's what an ad is not necessarily a recall sometimes it can be looked at like that but it's basically we've seen something in the field it's a it's a concern to us so we're issuing an ad on that type of airplane to have shops and maintenance people make sure that it's okay you know that's what an ad is squawk list we talked about that make sure the shop puts a squawk list together kind of sends it to you at minimum and says here's what we're doing here's what we're fixed at least get even if it's not verbal, just like an email and then the, an email back, you can email them back and say, hey, it looks good. Make sure the shop does that because I believe, and this is my opinion, you know, um, I believe a shop should do that. I don't think they should just have the free will to work on your plane and charge you whatever they want. Um, unless, unless you know them, unless, like I said, if you have a relationship with them and, and you've done three, four annuals with them and every time the bill's the same or roughly the same and you don't care, that's different. But and then only have them call you if there's something really extreme. But for the first time, for sure, get a make sure the shop gets you kind of a report or calls you and goes through the squawks. Uh, good shop will do customer approval. Basically, like I said, unless it's something super small, like putting anti-chafe on an on a oil line to prevent it from chafing, something that's not a lot of labor, they should be getting approval from you for it, you know, and... Um, so there's some things on an annual inspection and uh i think i covered a lot of it we may talk about more ins annual inspection stuff later but if you as an aircraft owner or someone who gets annual inspections done has a question for us drop us a comment down below in the in the youtube um, feed there and we'll i will answer it one of our staff members will answer it someone will answer it we'd love to hear from you because that's this channel is uh, designed to kind of help out uh, guys getting their plane maintained. And um, so we'd like to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment about the show, drop us a line. And 
Uh, if you are looking to get an annual inspection done, consider Phalanx Aviation. We're um, got a lot of mechanics, got a lot of knowledge, got a lot of resources, and if we can't help you, then we'll do our best to find someone who can, and that no cost. So um, I think that's going to wrap this show up. Like I said, if you enjoy it, if if you think that you're interested in maintaining your airplane or need some more info on uh, just how to maintain your airplane, hit the like or subscribe button because that's all we're going to talk about on this channel is uh, how uh, aircraft owners and operators can uh, be better educated about maintaining their aircraft. So with that being said, I'd like to just say thanks for showing up and we'll see you next time on Phalanx Frequency.